Now, imagine if we didn't clean the rust off of this hat and we sandwich it between those two adapters, what would the rotor kind of turn like? You'd have a wobble in it, wouldn't it? And if this thing has a wobble and we try and cut it, what are we going to cut into it? No. Well, we're going to cut the wobble into it, right? I mean, it's not going to be this severe. Obviously, it wouldn't be that bad. But it is possible, um, you know, you could have a piece of material on here that, that can cause this to go out, out of true by five or ten thousandths of an inch. You would cut that into it. So when you go put it on the car, if it lays flat on the car, then you're going to cause this vehicle to have a brake pulsation. Okay, so it's very important that you clean those surfaces. Now, we have a very rough surface right now because I did a fast pass. We want it to be as smooth as possible. So I'm going to run this back in. I'm going to add two more to it, and then I'm going to do a slow cut on it. And you can actually even see the difference in what the color looks like when it's a slow cut as opposed to a fast cut. Loosen your knobs. Add two. Loosen the knob. Add two. Lift the red knob. Put it to slow. Now, if we were replacing brakes, you know, say we're doing a brake job, we're machining these brake rotors, we're replacing brake pads. This is going to take a little while. You could theoretically go work on the vehicle, install your parts, maybe lubricate the slides, clean the slides up, and then keep an ear on this because you'll be able to hear when this is done. And it does take a while. Nice smooth finish now. Um, it has machined the rotor all the way around. Um, now we have put grooves in this. Okay. Anyone that want to take a guess how many grooves are in? Uh, 100. Many. Many. How many? Infinite number. 100. <laughs> Anyone else? Same amount that really happened. No, because, well, actually, there wouldn't have been any in it because it's been, um, the pads would have worn down. How much? Uh, take a guess. Two. Close. Four. One. Oh, uh, yeah, it's one stopped. continuous. Yeah. Okay. It's called a directional finish. It is called a directional finish. And we need to get rid of that directional finish in order to help the brake pads seat against the uh, against the rotors. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use some uh, sandpaper and we're going to scratch the finish on this. And we're actually going to put lines in it that cross each other. It's called a cross hatch. Um, one thing that you want to be careful of, because we're going to have the rotor in motion when we do this, don't work over the top of the bit. If you're working over the top of the bit and it grabs, it's going to want to drag your hand down into the cutting bit. It's not going to be very pleasant. Work under it. And that way, if you can, grabs it and it'll shoot off, okay? So all we're going to do is... All we're going to do is we're just going to run this up and down as, as this is turning, okay? Wait. Do you have to have the... Can you take that off now since it's not using it? Can I miss everything? Well, typically... You could do that, sure. This typically stays on the machine. I had it off of here just so that I could show you how it goes on. Right. Um, we don't take this off every time after we're done machining brake rotors. The majority of the things that you guys are going to machine are going to be brake rotors, and they're going to be hubless. So we leave this set up on here, um, and then if you need to, switch it over for the, uh, the adapter for the drum, which I'm going to show you that in a minute as well. But you can also move it, so even if you're working you, on you top... You could loosen it, swing it out of the way if you want, sure. Oh, and yeah. then, yes, if it's out of the way, then you can do, you can 
work wherever you want to work. Be careful because you're, you're getting ready to get really close, and up close and personal with this. So make sure you don't have anything hanging down. You don't want to be leaning over like this and then have that uh, a, a, a cord or a lanyard or something like that get caught up in here. So you just push against the brake rotor, move it up and down. That's it. That's it. And then when you're done, Did you, do both you, should, sides? Yep, yeah. you should see scratches on it. That they and they kind of will cross. So you don't need to do it for a long time. You just you don't. No, you don't need to do it for very long at all. All you're trying to do is just scratch the surface up. You're trying to change this directional finish, turn it into a non-directional finish going in multiple directions, okay? All right, now once we're done, what should we do before we put this on the car? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, put the micrometer on it and measure it to make sure that we have a machine below the discard at or below the discard thickness. If we have, we need to throw it away and get a new one. Okay, once we're done, <coughs> we're going to remove the rotor. The adapter should go up here. Right now I have all the adapters and stuff out here on the workbench to make it easier for you guys to see it. But when you're done with them, you should take them off and they should be stored up here, not on the workbench. Does it matter where you put it? No, wherever it fits. And when you're handling this, this has a nice clean finish on it right now. Don't touch the braking surface. Uh, any oil, dirt, stuff like that will get transferred onto here. And that's not something that we want on our new brake pads is oil and dirt, grease, stuff like that. Um, if you have to handle it, try and hold it from the outside or the center. Um, if you have to set it down someplace, set it down on the hat of the rotor so that it doesn't come in contact with anything. If we set it down like this, then anything that's on the workbench or floor or wherever you set it down can get transferred here as well. If you should happen to get grease or oil on here, then we would clean it off with a brake, uh, brake parts cleaner. Okay. Now that's couplets. I'm going to show you how to machine a hub rotor. This is the same way. It, everything is the same except everything is the exact same except how we physically put it on the machine. Now these adapters or these centering cones. We use in conjunction with the adapters, and those adapters sandwich the brake rotor, and these centering cones held at center. These centering cones are a little bit different. We don't need the adapters. What we want to do is, the first thing that you should do is clean out the grease from the hub. Get it as clean as possible, which I've already done. And then find the adapter that fits as best as possible. And it fits inside the race. Then we're going to put it on the machine. And we want to find another adapter that fits the other race, which this one doesn't. That fits down inside the, the outer bearing race. and install it on the machine. Now, from here on out, everything is the exact same. We're going to put spacers on here. Yep, throw our spacers on here. You we still, don't need, mm -hmm. you still need to put that rubber band light thing we on? We still need to use the silencer, yep. Again, we only need it tight enough just so the rotor doesn't spin independently. Um, everything from here on out is the exact same. You would put the silencer band on it, you set the bits the same, everything else is the exact same as a hubless rotor. Um, once again, the first step before we put this on here, we should do what to it? Measure, Measure it, make sure it's not at or below minimum refinish or discard. Um, one step that we didn't have to do with this was clean it because it's not being sandwiched between those two adapters, this is actually riding on the exact same bearing race that the, the bearings ride on when it's installed on a vehicle. Um, there is no